In this video, we're going to set up a title block similar to what you see here. We'll go through the process of entering different sizes of text. We'll set up a scale bar and we'll create a north arrow and go through the process for creating each of these. So you'll be going to a layout or your layout of your drawing. And to help us align, what we're going to do is use the grid command. So if we type in the word grid, and we're going to set our grid to one-tenth of an inch. And the first thing that you'll notice here is that the grid isn't actually aligning with our paper. So to do that, we can use what's called the UCS command, or User Coordinate System. And in this, we can click on the bottom corner of our piece of paper, hit return, and you can see now the grid does align with that bottom corner of our sheet of paper and also aligns over in the other corner, so showing our eight and a half inches across. So what we'll also do here is use the snap command and set the snap to the same one-tenth of an inch. So we'll first set up the outside border of our title block. And so if we zoom in, we'll go in two-tenths of an inch. Now you'll notice that there's a dashed line that goes around. This indicates the printable area. So elements need to be contained within this border in order for them to actually plot. Anything to the outside of that edge will not be seen when you either do a PDF file or plot out to a printer or a large format plotter. To eliminate a little confusion here, I'm going to switch from paper space to model space. And you can see that we have a separate grid within our viewport. I'm going to turn that off so that now when we go back into paper space, we just see this one grid rather than the two competing grids. Another thing I'm going to do is take our viewport and actually align that with the title block. The viewport will actually create a border. To add the title block, we we'll just simply come up to the text command and hit multi-line text. So we can simply create a bit of a window here. And you can begin typing in text. So we'll type in West Court Plaza. And what you'll notice up top here is, is that this is set at two tenths of an inch in terms of its size. If we put in my name, what we can do is highlight this and you can define a new text height. So we'll just make this one-tenth of an inch, type in 0.1 and hit return. And we now have a new text height for that. And you can continue to type in information that is needed or required for the title block. Next, we're going to make a graphic scale bar in order to show that one inch on the sheet of paper is the equivalent of eight feet. So the first thing that we need to do is change our grid that instead of a tenth of an inch, we want this to be equal to one eighth of an inch. And that's really related to our scale. So that one grid cell is the equivalent of one foot. We also want to change our snap to be that same size. So now we can use the p-line command to just simply begin drawing the scale bar, come over two feet and over two more feet and then over one, two, three, four feet. And this should be the equivalent of one inch now. We can use a graphic here and just simply draw in a line. We'll turn off our snap command and draw a line between those two points, come and draw another line, and another line. And we can now use the hatch command 
to do some solid fill here, we'll turn our snap off. And now use our hatch to fill in these areas to make a nice graphic appearance for our scale bar. We can now use the text command to show the size or the distances that we have. We'll select one tenth of an inch for the size of the text and just put in the zero, two, that's four feet, and then eight feet. So we have the scale set for our scale bar. Now let's take a look at how we can set up a north arrow. And if we just simply create something in the approximate size that we wish, we're going to turn our snap mode on and make certain that center and quadrant are set for us. We can then use the line command to begin drawing out our arrow, simply connecting the quadrant points to make certain that this is evenly balanced and the main line for the arrow. We can then use the offset command to simply offset these lines in order to create an outline for the arrow. And then we can offset this center line on either side if we simply select offset and make this point 0, 05 and simply copy this to either side of our line. We can then simply cap off the ends and then begin to use the trim command to trim out these excess pieces. Once you have these lines trimmed, then you can just simply come in with the hatch command make this a solid and fill in the outside areas or you could fill in the inside areas. So experiment with this and create a beautiful north arrow.